What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel and in this episode of Tackle Talk I'll be talking about I guess the essential bass fishing tactics that um, if you're not into bass fishing and trying to get more into it that you should definitely have and that you know produce the most fish and are not too hard to too hard to use. I got this idea because um, a guy texted me and asked hey what, what's some basic um, bass fishing tackle that I should have. And that gave me the idea of doing this video to explain kind of what I think you should have if you're trying to get into bass fishing. Um, so that's that's the premise of this video. So let's get into it. So, and a thing I was thinking of is I kind of already have that. I have my day box for, I guess, pond hopping and stuff like that. So this just holds my essential tackle that I use when I'm not on the boat, um, you know, pond hopping, lake jumping, whatever you want to call it, um, that kind of stuff. And so this is just gonna be the essential items that are easy to fish with that I think a beginner should buy. So let's start off with a square bill crankbait. You should definitely have a square bill crankbait. This is a KVD 1.5, uh, sweet, sweet square bill crankbait. Um, and I would recommend either this color, which I can't remember the color. I'll have it linked down in the description with all the other baits that I'll talk about. Uh, KVD 1.5 in either this color or a shad color, super sweet for stained water, makes a lot of noise, um, nice wobble action on those, so definitely a necessity, the KVD 1.5. Um, and as you go up there, you can get different crankbaits, you can get deeper diving ones, but that's just the one that I catch the most fish on, so that's the one I'm recommending. All right, and another very simple bait is the chatterbait, or bladed jig, whatever you want to call it. Um, this particular one's made by um, Z-Man, so Z-Man Chatterbait. Uh, the color I most like, it's actually this Chatterbait with a different skirt on it. Um, I will put a picture of it up here. Um, I cannot find these. I only found a few of them, and they're currently out of stock on um, basically everywhere, so I can't find them. They have this nice orange color to it. Uh, and I have caught so many fish on this chatterbait, this specific color chatterbait. I'm gonna try to order more so I have them, but um, yes, a chatterbait, um, just very simple, just cast and retrieve type of fishing. Um, there's even, you know, different colors, basically any color works, but uh, the color I mentioned, which I showed the picture of, um, is definitely my favorite. I've caught the most bass on that. Um, compared to other colors. So, moving on to a jig. A very, very good technique, which you should definitely have. Um, just any sort of hybrid um, slash swim jig. I prefer hybrid jigs because you can use them as a swim jig or as like a heavy cover jig. This, in particular, is the heavy cover jig made by, um, I think it's, oh, I will post what it actually is um in the in this bluegill color it is just a sweet sweet jig um again it'll all be linked down in the description why i can't remember the name of this specific jig it has a nice rattle on the back even though they fall off all the time but that is a 100 percent necessity for um, getting into bass fishing is jig fishing um i mean you can catch fish on jigs anytime you can catch them spring summer fall all the time they're eating jigs it doesn't matter all right now another technique um which i've we've messed around with a lot is jerkbait fishing it tends to be more of a spring thing um definitely a search technique but um definitely make sure you have yourself a good jerkbait in your box this is particular a wrap a shadow wrap this is a short version and this is our favorite color for bass fishing. Um, definitely, you know, obviously linked down in the description. But um, yes, the Rapala um, Shadow Wrap, great jerk bait. But uh, just make sure you have a jerk bait of some form. It's more of a um, a spring technique, but definitely catches fish all all year. Not my favorite thing to throw, but definitely something you should have in your tackle box. Okay, moving on to a extremely, extremely important um, item you should 100% have in your box, like next to a jig important, is a hollow body frog. Uh, I love fishing hollow body frogs in the summer. 
um, just throwing them on pads. I mean, they'll eat, they'll eat hollow body frogs in the spring. I caught, I caught them like a week ago on hollow body frogs. They're just eaten all the time. Um, and this particular one is the Booyah Pad Crasher. Super um, inexpensive, just best bang for your buck frog. Always make sure you uh, trim the skirts down to about an inch and a half. Um, a tip I learned from, I believe, Seth Fighter talked about that, is they hit the skirt instead of the, um, the bait. So you want to make sure you trim those skirts down to um, make sure you're getting a lot of hit, hits on the actual bait. But uh, yeah, just anywhere there's pads and just slop on the surface of the water, you throw this thing, you'll get some blow up. So 100% a necessity to have in your tackle box. All right, now let's move on to some non, I guess, baits, but more of hooks and terminal tackle type things you should have. Let's start off with some basic hooks you should have. So you should definitely have some wide gap worm hooks in your, um, in your box. They're, these I think are, I believe are VMC extra wide gap hooks. Um, definitely a huge necessity for Texas rigging, um, anything. I mean, you can Texas rig Senkos, worms, creature baits, all that kind of stuff. But you should definitely have some, um, some wide gap hooks. Another uh, hook you should have is the um, VMC Nico hook. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, uh, obviously link down in the description, but um, a super good um, Nico rigging, wacky rigging hook. Um, the reason I don't use their, we don't use their wacky rig hook, um, the shank on it right here is so short that you tend to lose a lot more fish doing that than just with the uh, traditional Nico hook. Um, you can also use this for drop shot fishing, which is another thing I'll talk about here in a minute, but um, it can work for both, but definitely a, a need. You need to have these in your box. All right, so some other terminal tackle you should have is some bullet weights. You don't have to get all fancy with tungsten. These aren't tungsten, these are lead bullet weights. You can get them for fairly inexpensive. Just make sure you have a range of sizes from you know pretty light to fairly heavy. You don't really need anything over an ounce, but um, you know if you're gonna go to about an ounce, you should probably invest in a couple tungsten weights. But these lead weights are fairly inexpensive, just um, on the cheaper side, uh, mainly for Texas rigging um, baits. Super, super good technique for catching a lot of uh, midsummer fish. So make sure you have some of that. Um, and also some um, pegs, some pegs to peg your weight. Uh, I peg almost all of the weight I fish. I should probably try doing it a little bit more uh, unpegged because I've, I've had pretty good luck unpegging it, but uh, make sure you have some pegs in there. They're, or I guess bobber stops. These are rubber and they, um, yeah, to peg your weights and stuff like that. Another thing you should have is some drop shot weights. Um, this is a round drop shot weight. They have this little eye on top that you uh, thread your line through. Uh, and basically, if you don't know what a drop shot is, it's a pretty simple rig. It's literally just this weight with uh, you know maybe a foot or so of line, a hook, and you put a bait on there. And this is for deeper fishing. Um, when you're out, especially if you're gonna fish from a dock or something like that, um, a fishing pier, I can tell you, I've had a couple uh, fun times where I've gone out on a crowded dock and just nailed fish in front of a bunch of people who couldn't catch anything on a drop shot. So make sure you have some drop shot weights, um, somewhere about half an ounce or so would be a good drop shot weight, maybe a little bit more. Uh, but uh, yeah, make sure you have some drop shot weights. And if you want to get a little bit fancy, um, you could throw in some, um, some drop shot hooks which are a little bit more of a short shank hook uh, with a little bit of a bended, um, a bended eye. It almost looks like a uh, octopus hook. This is a um, trocar drop shot hook. These aren't cheap hooks, so um, if you're looking to stay uh, cheap, uh, maybe just stick with those Nico hooks that I talk about. Um, but uh, if you wanna up your game, throw in a few drop shot hooks. That will really get it, uh, get it going. Um, now I'm going to move on to some of the plastics you should have. Now that I talked about um, kind of the hard baits and some of the terminal tackle you'll need. Again, this isn't a lot of baits, but it's just kind of the necessities that if I could only take a few baits with me, it'd be the things I'd take. 
So for the for the plastics, I have a couple different things. Um, so some kind of a swim bait. This is the uh, Gary Yamamoto Zako for um, your chatterbait trailer. Um, you definitely want a chatterbait trailer. This is that um, that color. They make them in all sorts of different colors. Obviously, link down in the description. Um, but uh, I like this especially because it doesn't have much action. The chatterbait has a ton of action. You don't need a big boot tail swim bait going do 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 behind it. So this just kind of flows with it. And the reason you want a trailer on your chatterbait is to give the bait mass. So there's essentially nothing there. Uh, on it, it's just a skirt, and how fish, especially bass, eat stuff is they just open their mouth and that forms a vacuum and actually sucks things in. So that will suck your bait in. But if your bait doesn't have any mass, it just has that skirt, all the water will just rush through it and it won't be able to suck your bait in. Um, also, it gives them something to kind of chew on. So when they suck it in, maybe they feel um, the rubber and soft of the trailer more than just the hook and all the metal that comes along with a chatterbait. So definitely have yourself some chatterbait trailers. If you don't want to go with the Zakos, you know, just use a swim bait. I mean, you could use a craw, you could use anything. Just make sure you have some kind of a plastic on the back of your chatterbait. All right, so another thing you should definitely have is some jig trailers. So these are basically just craws that uh, if you saw the jig, it has a craw hooked on the back of it for basically the same reason. Um, just to give the fish something to chew on. Also, just to kind of give it those claws, which give it a little bit of kind of a nice little action to it. Um, and often kind of flicker like that. So you can, if you reel it in, it will, um, it will kind of have that more than just being pulled in. And often you can, um, you can get fish to hit that way too. Almost like you're using it like a chatterbait. Uh, definitely caught fish that way, but make sure you have some, um, uh, jig trailers. These are some uh, chigger craws by um, Berkeley. Uh, either of these, these aren't super expensive, so I'd probably recommend some um, uh, chigger craws, or I think they're called the uh, Christy craw. I'll have both uh, linked down below. Uh, but that is the um, jig trailer. Definitely make sure you have some jig trailers. Uh, moving on, moving on to some important stuff. Um, we have stick baits. I, you can use these for everything, but mainly these are going to be used for Nico rigging, um, wacky rigging, uh, and drop shot fishing. You'll use them the same way as you would a wacky rig. Just hook them through the middle of the bait. Like you just hook them through the middle so they hang like that. So that's how you'd rig up your drop shot. You just hook it to that and bounce it. Um, but you can also rig them weightless for a wacky rig. Just hook them through there, cast them. They skip along the surface of the water. And that's probably the easiest way to catch fish for a beginner is just a wacky rig Senko. Um, these particular ones are made by Bass Pro Shops. They're called the, um, the Sticko Worm. Uh, and I will have linked uh, up here uh, a video where I explain why I use um, the stick a worm versus a Senko, but the long and the short of it is cheaper and it has about the same rate of fall. Um, I'm also going to talk about these, um, the Yum Dingers, which are basically the same thing, except they're lighter. They have less salt in them. Um, these both have salt in them to make them sink. These sink faster and these sink slower. And the reason I think you should have both of them um, is because these are going to be better in a little bit deeper water. And I think this really does matter, having something that uh, will sink very slowly. So this is going to be good if you're fishing in like a foot of water. And this is going to be like, you know, two foot plus because it sinks faster. And basically, it's just going to give the fish more time to see your bait and be like, well, what's that? Let me, let me eat that. So um, definitely have yourself some stick baits. All right. And uh, finally, you should definitely have yourself some creature baits. Um... These particular ones are the Zoom, Zoom Brush Hog, and they're basically just a, a, a creature bait for Texas rigging. Um, as you can see, they're just a little like salamander thing, um, and these work excellent for Texas rigging. Um, just a bait that is absolutely a necessity that I use almost every day I go fishing is a Texas rig uh, creature bait. You can rig them weightless, you can rig them um, weighted, and just 
drop them, boom, just kind of work them like a with your rod and they work excellent for um, for catching for catching some bass. So uh, definitely make sure you have some creature baits in your arsenal. Okay, well, I uh, hope you found that video helpful. Um, just kind of looking at the things that I think you should have that I wish I would have uh, been using from the beginning, but uh, we don't all we don't all start uh, start using the start using the good stuff. So, yeah, I would highly recommend checking those baits out. Again, down in the description along uh, with our Instagram, so you can follow that. You're gonna see uh, all the big fish we catch uh, all year long. But uh, I think that'll wrap it up for the video. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you got some uh, use out of this. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you later.